move on putting this on because that guy looks really angry. Right, so a lot of you know what this is. Um, so I don't have to explain an awful lot about it. And I'm not going to, because trust me, this will be as honest as honest can be. I'm not sponsored in any shape or form or getting paid anything for doing this. I'm just gonna show you guys what it does. You guys can make your own mind up after that. Starters, I nearly have to read it myself. A Hustler Onroller LX 105. First impressions. Well, never used one before seen one before so i don't know a huge amount about them i'll be honest with you dermot sent this up to me and wanted me to try it out before we were done our bales and we really are going to be done our bales now very soon because i'm getting ready actually tomorrow to open the pit that's coming up now soon the pit is the big one and that's the one i'm really really concerned about and i'm hoping fingers crossed that it works out i'm feeling it will but if it does work out the tires is gone i will be very very happy and fingers crossed that goes. But that's for a different video. We're not getting distracted from that. <laughs> it's just something I am thinking a lot about this last while. So the day Dermot sent this up to me basically was right in the middle of the storm barra. And we were, weren't having rain. We were having like a monsoon nearly that morning. So I couldn't even talk to him. He literally left it off in the street. I helped him lift it off with the loader. And he was like this here, with the jacket pulled around his face. It was lashing and it was very cold as well. So he couldn't tell me anything about it. So I said, all you need to do, send me a WhatsApp and let me know on WhatsApp the whole specs of it so I can tell people what it's basically about. So I'm going to just literally tell you some of the things he told me about it um, on WhatsApp. I'll simplify them and just tell you the main points that we see on it. First thing about it is, straight away I notice it's well built. This one here is a chain driven system, supposed to carry a load of 1200 pounds. Is that right? I hope I got that right. So I can't see them breaking anytime soon. I don't know, but I don't hear many people talking about the chains breaking. All your bearings and everything's all covered and hidden, so nothing's going to get dirty. And I suppose when you're working on silage and things, it is quite a dirty job. So all these bearings definitely all need to be covered. Grease regularly, so there's obviously a grease nipple up there to work with. Floor is a polyethylene... Polyethylene... Never get... I never can say that word. Polyethylene. Got one of those floors in it. Um, you know them floors? Them floors. Got one of those floors in it. And seemly... The silage doesn't stick to it. And it's not a rubber belt or anything like that. It's a good, strong floor. So that's a big plus. When I put a post up of a picture of this, asking people thoughts on my Facebook and Instagram account, you can go over there and look at the comments yourself. And you'll see yourself that a lot of people have these and really like them. Um, all over the world. This is built in New Zealand. So originally this comes from New Zealand. So there's a lot of guys out there with big farms that are running thousands of bales through them. And they've commented on that and said that they've never had any trouble with them. When we do talk about trouble, there's one thing that does stick out in my mind about this. Very rare will you ever get a farm machine that comes with a four year warranty. Household appliance maybe, but very rare. I don't think I've ever seen a bit of farm equipment that came with a four year warranty. So that will take a lot of the problems of thinking something's gonna break out of your head. Not that it's going to break, but having four years of backup, that's pretty important. These are your side rollers, so you probably can understand yourself what they do. You can adjust them here into three different slots. If you have a bale that likes to jump around, or a bale that's kind of a misfigured bale, it won't jump out across when it's been fed. So this just stops it from doing that. They'll roll around, nothing's gonna cross that. These here are galvanized, which to me is a must, because anyone knows the acid and silage will rust pretty much anything if you're not using it often enough. So it's nice to see them galvanized. If I was buying one, I would like to see a galvanized one sure if you can get it galvanized but it would be nice to see a galvanized version galvanized machinery although a little bit more expensive hard to beat it so i'm not going to go into the workings of it too much because the best way to do that is actually show you the thing working so what you're going to see me doing is i'm going to drop this down on the legs that it has there now drop your arms further down this will unhitch itself it's just a hook it's just a hook that's here if you can see it it's hard just to show you exactly where it is but there's a hook there and when you drop your arms down you can drive out and then you have literally what is a bale spike. So you go along then, pick your bale up, bring it around and drop it in, drive out, drive back in, pick the thing up, no getting out of the tractor, only to open the wrap on the bale 
and away you go. If for some reason you need to use the other side, you can do that. It can be used from both sides. This is where the motor will engage here and turn these pins around obviously. And this door here can come off very, very easily and you can use it from this side as well. If you're using the system over a while, maybe it's no harm to switch around just to wear the thing out evenly. Maybe that's a good idea. We'll set it up here, we'll stick a bail on it and we'll see how we get on. Now, I will warn you, I've never used this before, ever. So I'll be going a lot slower than most because of the fact I don't want to damage it. It's a demo and it's probably going to be sold onto someone's farm. So I'm trying my best not to damage it. A lot of you guys will have one or buy one in the future. We'll get more and more used to using it, so you'll get a lot faster. So don't go to what I'm doing here. I'm a novice. I'm giving it a go for the first time. So a little issue straight away. Um, these bales here, these are not the dry bales. These are the ones we cut, just standing out of that sun. But these are the ones we cut on our fourth cut. Do you remember the ones we done in the beginning of September? Um, well, they're soggy. Look at them. A lot of people did say they work better with a dry bale. We had to use the bales that came from our second cut. They were lovely dry bales. No doubt they'd work, but who always has dry bales? And we live in Ireland, a lot of people has wet bales. So the issue I had there was every time I'd go to lift a bale on, I couldn't get the arms high enough. Now the arms in these tractors aren't exceptionally high. Our bigger Massey definitely would lift it on no problem. But this one struggled to get it high enough off the ground. If you look here, you'll see the way I had to put it in a few different places just to get it up. I got it on, no bother. But it's all to do with where the tractor maybe was sitting. Another thing I could do to instantly sort it would be to put on a shorter top link so we can get it up further. If I wanted to cheat, and use my front loader that's on the tractor, no problem, just drop it in anywhere you want. But I don't want to do that, I want to act like I have no front loader. So a lot of people don't have front loaders, and so I just want to have it as a one piece machine, so hence the reason I was using this. Anyway, let's get it hooked up now, then we get this wrap off, make sure I don't make a real mess of it, and <laughs> we start feeding. Right, so I was just going by a couple of comments that I got on Facebook and people tell me how you take the wrap off. I was looking on YouTube as well. I'm not sure if I've done it right. Probably should have went down below halfway maybe. But basically the moral of the theory is you cut your bale the whole way around, you take that piece of net off and the cover and then you spin the bale around and take the rest off just as I'm about to do now. I made a little bit of a mistake. I turned it a little bit too far and I didn't realise you weren't supposed to do that. And I fed out a little bit of silence in the ground. Hence the reason I had to throw it over here to the heifers. Just turn the bale around, lift the top of the wrap off. Don't overturn it or we'll start feeding. So we have our bale on. Now remember, this is a wet bale. You see that? It is soaking this bale. I can't understand why it's so wet because the stuff didn't seem that wet when we were making in September. It's lovely silage, it smells great. You can see the cattle absolutely love it. But it's a wet bale. It's not really a great example of showing this machine working at its absolute best. We make do with what we have.
All right, so I know it's a bit dark in here and my lanes aren't perfectly straight, that's human error, but it did feed out. It did feed it all out in front of the cows, exactly what it was supposed to do. A wee bit too much here at the beginning maybe, but then when I started moving, it started to do its job much better. a lot better. I just wanted to show you how it's straight, me using it for the first time. This is probably how you get along in your first go. The mistake I made at the beginning was going too fast. I went a bit slow with the spool, didn't just go full whack like I did at the beginning and I got a nice even coat here. It came out much better when it went slower and you can see there, although my lines aren't perfect, that's human error. It did feed well along the cow's heads, just like a diet feeder. Now I'm sorry if it's a bit loud in here, I want to show you actually the way this thing works. Um, so your spool valve here, is hooked up to two pipes that's going out to this one way, the opposite way. That's the Hustler Onroller LX105. Look at Johnson machine, we have them there if you want to go and look at them for yourself. An awful lot of people have nothing but good things to say about them. I'd need to use that for a week or two to get the proper use out of it. But there's a reason why I probably could never buy that particular one. And that's because my passageway isn't wide enough. My passageway is 12 foot wide, so I couldn't feed this side and reverse back and feed this side. I'd be driving on top of this. Now my bale splitter, I really love. And the reason I love it is, you can reverse in there with a bale, split it in half, and it just fills that whole area. And I do that with two bales here, and that means I don't have to feed them for a day and a half. That allows me a little bit of extra time between feeds. With this and a diet feeder, you're more prone to be feeding nearly every day, which a lot of people would recommend, of course. One disadvantage the bale splitter has, and you would have seen it in my videos, is when you go into a house like this, when you split the bale in half, yes, it would fall over to the barrier on both sides, but when they eat that section on both sides, it will have to grape, and that's a big advantage to probably see to a lot of people. It does away with the graping. I don't mind the graping that much, but my back isn't great, and now that I'm in my late, early 30s, it doesn't help. The reason why I couldn't lift the bale was because we have a puncher. I didn't know that at the time. And that's the reason the tractor is sitting very low. Anyway, I'm going on to the next job. Any questions about it, feel free to ask or chat among each other in the comment section. If you have one, you can share your thoughts with someone else. And back and forth, that's what this comment section is all about. Would I buy one? Not at the moment. The bill splitter to me works just exceptionally well for my setup, especially that house being so tight. In the future, you'll never know. One thing I do like is the fact that it feeds from both sides, but I can see the reason why so many people like these. It does have a lot of advantages, and you can do it all from the one tractor. That hasn't got a puncher. Yeah, it's a good machine. You make of it as you will. Now here's the yoke you haven't seen me using in a while. And there's a reason for that. It's broken again. This machine, the best way to describe it is, it's a bit like Trigger's broom and only fools and horses. Because there's that many parts in it, I don't think there's much of it that's original anymore. It just seems to be always something wrong with it. But you know, when it does work, it's so good. So early on in the year I done a video, you might have seen it, but basically all it was, was put a new clutch cable onto this yoke. You can see that's why the spring looks so new and everything looks so new, even the label's still on the cable. That was fine, until we started using it now, after getting our engine done on it. We started using it and somewhere in the mechanism cut straight through the cable, and boom, cable snapped. And we only got about five or six uses out of it and that was it, snapped, and I just said to myself, yeah, you can imagine the colourful words that came out of me. Let's start with the amount of money we've put into this thing. We changed the tyres, right? Now, the tyres that came on it were like a tractor style tyre. It actually perished and they busted out of the sides. So we had to change them. Then we put a new rubber on it. Now that's a changeable part. We can't fall out with that. Then we put a new throttle on it because it snapped. And um, with a real bad mechanism in the old engine. Uh, left this to be too hard to move. It was plastic originally. So we ended up putting on a new lever here. A tenner is all that cost, not the end of the world. But then the engine. The last engine was on it, we got it reconditioned. But fixed. Water was getting into the engine. I don't know why some of the lads seem to think if you power wash these the water can get past the seals. Maybe. Maybe that's the reason. I don't know. But we got it reconditioned. We didn't power wash it again. But yet again we still had the same problem. I showed it in videos before where our oil would be always kind of a milky colour 
and we kept changing the oil every two weeks the water was getting in some more basically and we didn't know why it was getting in because it was sitting inside so that engine gave trouble again wouldn't start i ended up i had to make a decision to buy a brand new one or get a new engine so we ended up getting a new engine that was another 400 quid are you getting where i'm going with this i originally bought this for about 11 1200 quid at the time i know they're a little bit dearer now not much but they're a little bit dearer but i put 900 euro into it i've had it nine ten years you can understand my kind of feeling towards it but look at it. it's so good it earns its money here by saving me a lot of work with my back and things is it any good for cleaning yards no no i wouldn't recommend it for cleaning yards but for cleaning slats pushing back silage irreplaceable absolutely brilliant for that so before we talk any more about that let's just get the new cable out and the new handle and get it installed That's it in the right place, sort of. But, just looking at it there now, that's a nasty wee bend that's there. That's the way this was when I bought it. That's a nice wee hoop there. I'm wondering, should I take this a different route up here? Yeah, let's do that. To be honest with you, that's the way it came new. That's the way I put on the other cable as well. But you know something, I think that's wrong. That looks more normal to me. It might rub again this wheel, but I'll cable tie it in there. Nothing's gonna to touch it down the back. I think that's a more straightforward route. The cable shouldn't be twisted, it should be pulling straight. So that might make a big difference on its own. Just realized something. This sits on here, and a nut goes down there, and into that little hole there. When I was in the place getting this, I left the nut behind me, thinking that a new nut would come with this one, when well, in fact it didn't come with it. So do I have a bolt that long? Nope. Am I gonna go and get one this evening? Absolutely not. I did have two short ones and got my MIG welder out, joined the two of them together, and you know something? I'll walk every bit as good. The MIG welder's great for them little jobs like that there. Just grind it down, and hey, as long as it's straight, do the job. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> I've said nothing. Right, we have an issue. It's just too long, and that's just the simple fact of it. It doesn't matter how much you pull it that way or whatever route you want to take on it. It's going to be too long. Too much actual steel cable inside, that's what the problem is. The only way to fix this little steel ball is in the wire here. The stops pulling through the spring. If I could shorten it by that much there, my job would be fixed. I've devised a little bodge job. Look at we all do it, but unfortunately I'm having to do it quite a lot with this thing. What I've kind of come up with. I got myself an ordinary block connector using electricity. Cut off all the white plastic around it. Now I have a steel plate here with two screws in it. Tighten the two screws on the cable somewhere along the line. I shorten the screws, that way it doesn't contact the wire and there's no chance then of actually piercing the wire. That'll move up and down on that cable, but it won't pull through the spring. And now I have two of them on thinking that this might be the right length. Fingers crossed. Might be getting pretty close. By looking at that straight away, we need one more and that should work. So one more block connector. That means three block connectors, probably taking about an inch and a half off this cable. We should be right. That was a siege. You know what? It's all right, it works. It, that's not gonna nip the cable in any shape or form because this cable's able to move nice and freely inside that. So it's just like a sleeve. The other two of these block connectors that are in here, I removed the screws completely because it doesn't need them. It only needs them on the end here. So it cannot pass that ball that's on the top. At the end of the day, that's all that matters. As we're losing light, there's my yard light on there now because it's just gone four o'clock. Success, that's it, job done. There is another way you could do that, that little ball that's on the end. You could get a little replacement ball, 
and solder it in properly. But hey, it'll do rightly. At least that's our scraper back to walk anyway. With this hustler, before we leave it on that, I have it all washed now, ready to go back. Before I showed you guys at work and I watched the video on YouTube, I searched this brand first to find out a bit about them and watched the video on YouTube. So that video, I'm not sure where it was made or when it was made. I'll put a link to that video. So you guys who didn't see enough at work in there can watch it and make your own decisions on that. I know a lot of people is interested in it. Something that works great on one farm mightn't work as good on others. It's like the fact that we don't have a diet feeder and a lot of people would ask us, would you have a chance to diet feeder? Our sheds just don't really suit a diet feeder because that old shed that's down there at the back, that shed was built in 1997 and you can't drive straight through it. And that kind of rules out the diet feeder because you can't get back far enough to get the silage right to the end. So it doesn't really work for us. In a few years time, the next building project I do here, as well as getting that done, cattle wise building project will be to make a few improvements to that shed, maybe make it a little bit bigger, change the layout to it. That's way down the line. But we will look at that then, and then if that opens it up, we could look at something like this, or we could look at a diet feeder down the line. Now, before we end today's video, Sunday, it's open now. I'm smiling, and that's a really good thing. But it's opened. I'm already using it. You're going to see all about that on Sunday. So that's a big one coming up. I know a lot of you guys are interested in that. I have shared a post on Instagram about it. A couple of little sneak peeks, but not giving too much away. Sunday's video, that's the big one. I'm going to leave it there for now. Thanks very much for watching as always. If you haven't subbed, now is the time to do it. Give us a like, ring the little bell, notify you when our videos is up. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and on TikTok. Until the next one, we'll talk to you again.